So today we're gonna to be talking about lockers. I have a pretty unique situation where I've got a car with twin e-lockers and a car with twin air lockers. So we're gonna run them back to back and I'm gonna tell you my experience with both of them and my opinion might actually surprise you. So stick around. Yeah, we've got a car with e-lockers and we've got a car with air lockers and so we're going to be able to see them back to back which i'll show you at the end of this first i just want to talk about my experience with them and how i ended up with a car with e-lockers and air lockers if you saw my last video you know that i put e-lockers in this first it was going to be the first air lockers that i was ever installing e-locker just seemed like the most simple to install <laughs> It was reliable to begin with, I didn't really have any issues with it and so I decided to chuck the front one in as well. And like as soon as I chucked the front one in, the issues started. It's never been the problem of direction change and all that other crap you see on YouTube. At the end of this video you're going to see a demo where that doesn't really affect you at all. The problem I always had with them was getting them to engage in the first place. And the more we move on, I'll tell you why I think that happened. You know, you can tell when your locker's working because the wheels are both trying to turn at the same speed and so you get one that's ripping up the ground sort of thing. And that just wasn't happening. So I got home, jacked it up. Sometimes it would lock in the dog and sometimes it wouldn't. There we go. And free again. Lock. I put a multimeter on the diff, it had 12 volt. You know, that eliminates everything forward of the connection to the diff because it wouldn't have 12 volt there if there was a fuse issue, relay issue. I ended up pulling at the top plug on the diff, trying to undo it, I think, and it ripped off the end. And so I'll show you a picture now where it had just like a wire sticking out of the top. You know, that wasn't even anything that I did. So I think you're gonna start to see a pattern here about where their issues are coming from. So I redid the plug. And that seemed to be all right for a little bit, but it still wasn't engaging every single time. And I've got, you know, video after video of me in my driveway, rotating it, rotating it, trying to get it to lock and just could not get it to lock. And so I was getting really fed up with this and I was really disappointed, especially because I just spent another $1,800 putting the front one in. So that's locked, take the power off. And in the end, there was another issue in their loom. So where you push the relay down into the relay socket, it had actually pushed one of the connections right through. And so the tabs that hold it in the socket weren't locked in there. And so that's now two problems with their loom so far. I ended up ripping all their wiring out. I went to my own wires down to the diff. I put Deutsch connectors down at the diffs instead. Ran my own wire, ran my own relay, and made my own little 12 volt hub in the center console where I ran my own power to the diffs just so it was eliminating everything that came with their wiring loom. And so you've got to wonder what all these voltage issues are doing to the diff mechanically. You know, you've got voltage dropping, you've got intermittent connections, you've got wheels slipping, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but all those voltage issues ended up burying the dog. So that's why I want to recommend to you, if you do get yourself an e I personally recommend chop the connections that they provide straight off, put on your own Deutsch plugs and make your own wiring looms with your own relays and just chuck that wiring loom in the bin. When we installed Harris's locker, like it was tripping its own fuse. So I just seen too many issues with them to trust their wiring looms anymore. It worked up at the entire Cape, except when I was at the five beaches, I was trying to do tight circles and the locker wasn't working again, right? We went to Fraser Island and I whipped the back out a few times and the locker seemed to be working again so I was just like, screw it, it's probably the dog bird, I'll worry about it when I get home. We got to Glass House and after the first two days trying to drive Little Red, I was like, man, there's something going on here. I'm actually only spinning one rear wheel. And so every time I had to straddle that V, I was just slipping back wheels straight into the crack because if you're not rear locked, you'll get double the speed of one tire. And especially with Patrol's rear steer, it just slips you straight into Vs like that. 
I was really lucky. The connection was broken right above the diff housing, and so I just pulled enough wire through. All I did was crimp a little blade terminal on it, crimp a female blade on the other side, connected it up, and I seemed to be locked for the rest of the glassy trip and for Victoria with Tyler. I got home from the Cape, and as I was rolling the GU diffs under my car, because I had to swap the centers from my GQ diffs over to my GU diffs, I took the locker apart, which meant that the factory bolts were undone, and I checked the dog, and I could see that the dog was bird, but I didn't have the part for now. I emailed Harrop to order the dog, and I just, you know, put it all back together and put it back in and lived with it for the time being. Tyler and TC told me on the $1,000 track that only one of my rear tires was spinning. I even got a message from like Jesse Gleason saying, hey mate, your rear locker's not working, which is really awesome. But yeah, I never got around to actually replacing that dog. And then right before the East Coast trip with Tyler, I found that there was a dent from the inside of the diff, which looked like a piece of metal had gone around the tip of the crown wheel and dented it from the inside. We dropped the rear center before that trip, which is what you see in his video. And that's when I found all the bolts in there. While I had it out, I also put the new dog in to see if that would improve anything. And so this is when the saga starts of the bolts walking out. So initially I had the factory bolts walk out. I put those temporary normal bolts in that I had laying around. I Loctited them in. They ended up walking out. It's happened again. And getting mashed up in the diff. So that's when I went to Repco and actually bought the right tensile, which is I think 12.9. And I got bolts that were a little bit longer so they could grab new thread. I brake cleaned all the, the locker threads out and Loctited the new bolts and torqued them all to spec. And I thought that would definitely be the end of it. Sure enough, they walked out again. And so that's the first set, the factory Harrop set, the temporary set that I put in and another set of high tensile ones. And so that was like, you know, the last straw, I was fed up. And so when the ARB lockers turned up, because you got to drill the housing in a different spot, I brought this car up the backyard and dropped both diffs out of it and airlocked those. Once I didn't need this car anymore, I brought it into the driveway, took both e lockers out, and put both air lockers into here. It was a really good time because at the time Outback Equipment had also sorted me the 24 volt system with a 24 volt compressor, and that all went smooth. The lockers don't leak, they're working really well. And so then I had the e lockers that come out of this. Yeah, the front one's fine, bolted the front one in with the rear one this time. I put new bolts in again, brake cleaned locked tight and this time I welded the heads of the bolts so they couldn't undo and then I chucked them in this. I haven't dropped the diff oil yet but in a few months I'll drop the diff oil and make sure that the bolts haven't walked out again because usually you'll see the heads of the bolts you know down on the magnet or whatever. So far it's been like the front one. Every time I hit that button and expect to be locked it's been locked. But anyway that's the story. I think now we'll probably get to the fun stuff and I want to show you a comparison of the two lockers back to back and you'll be able to see the whole e-locker forwards and backs thing that everyone whinges about. Again, to me, that isn't really an issue. It was more about the actual issues I was having getting it to engage. My preference is air locker, but not because of the functionality of the lockers or my experience really. It's solely just, I forgot how good it was to press your locker and hear the compressor start and then stop. You can pretty much know that your lockers are working. Working. With these, it's just a guessing game until you look at a video later or someone tells you your rear locker wasn't working. I was hesitant to do another video of me just sitting and talking, but like people wanted to know this story. But anyway, let's get to the fun stuff. So I'm just taking the front hubs out and then I'm going to go forwards to reverse. So you can see one tire spin and then lock and, and just so you can see how long it takes for both wheels to lock.
Well, I hope that shows you, you know, a little bit of what's going on and that the e-locker rotation doesn't really affect me at least. But yeah, I've got one more thing to show you and then we'll wrap it up. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you was the rotation that people talk about with e-lockers. And so right now, I'm unlocked. And so that's the forward to rear movement you have with an airlocker. So you can pretty safely say, as soon as you press that button, you're locked. Alrighty, so then we've got the GU with the e-locker. So, unlocked at the moment. So I've just hit the button. We'll see. So there you go, that's how long it took to lock. Locked again. So we'll put that at the top. So yeah, it's about quarter to one third of a turn until locked. Initially though, it could take a few rolls to get locked, like when you saw it to start with. So, a few things. Does that bother me? And is that the reason why I went to air lockers? No, that was expected. I knew about that. We all know about that. It doesn't affect you as I showed on the ruts. It just, I don't know, it's never really bothered me. I love the air lockers. I really do, like the idea of just having a magnet and 12 volts, it's unreal. But that's their design and I wish they'd fix it, but they won't. If, you know, if they were going to fix it, they would have done by now. Either way, this car is absolutely twin locked. The e-lockers are going to work, this is just a tourer, and the GQ has got something more robust that's, you know, just immediately locked all the time. Thanks heaps for watching, that's going to do it for today, and I'll see you guys in a fortnight. Cheers. Yeah.